Oh my gosh. What? Are you kidding? <gasps> Dude. Are oh, you kidding me? <gasps> Bubby, this is the coolest. We're taking a look at the next generation of Avatar video transmitters. They're coming in in two flavors, right? We've got the Avatar HD Kit V2 and the Avatar HD Pro Kit, all right? So there's a new video transmitter. I'm excited for that. It's got this black finish. It's got some really exciting features. Just looking at it. Solder pads. Solder pads. That's really great. So you have the option to plug in your connector mm -hmm. or solder direct, That's which is really great. Nice. For ease of building, it's nice that you can keep things plug and play. Yeah. But if you're going to be crashing and you want to make things more durable, it's always going to be more durable to cut that connector off and solder directly to the board. Yep. Something I immediately see is they also have 20 by 20 mounting hole as well now. So exciting. So nice. Yes. It's these little things that make a big difference. They've got holes on both sides of the heat sink mm -hmm. and it's threaded. You can mount it on either side, thread right into the heat sink. Nice. Okay, there's still 25 by 25 holes, but it comes, you know, bolted together with nuts and bolts. So if you wanted to mount it something 25 by 25, mm -hmm. you could remove the hardware and run it through, but I think most people are going to choose to mount it with the 20 by 20 threaded holes. I think that's that's how I'm going to uh, be doing me it. Me too, that's how I'm doing it. Yeah. Also, for the plate that retains the antenna connection, mm -hmm. M2 screws. Let's How go. nice is that, right? That's so so nice. it's the same M2 screws that are holding the heat sinks together, okay. right? On the original Avatar video transmitter, you had these teeny tiny Phillips head screws that were so, so finicky. Easy to lose, so finicky. Yeah. We don't have to deal with that anymore. Basic M2 screws. Everyone's going to have a 1.5 millimeter driver in their Rotor Riot toolkit. So <laughs> no problem dealing with that. And speaking of antennas, there's only one. Only one, not antennas. With the original Avatar video transmitter, you had two antennas. Yeah. They've only got one antenna. I mean, what do you think that's going to do for performance? You think we'll have less range or anything like that? I'd be curious to test it out, but from seeing like other HD systems in the past go from two to one, I, I think it'll be basically the same performance. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know exactly how it functions. Yeah. You know, I know that the digital systems, you know, have inputs and outputs. The goggles are transmitting and receiving, and it's a two-way communication. And my understanding is that having two antennas on the video transmitter helps with that. But we've seen successful digital systems before use one antenna. Yeah. So hopefully they've done it right. I think it's just going to be important that we mount it you know, in a good way so it's straight up so we have the best RF. Yeah. yeah. Now when it comes to cameras, you've got two flavors. Okay. Okay? You've got the standard V2 camera okay. and you've got the pro camera. So the standard V2 camera, some changes from what we've been using before. It's got a 4x3 image sensor. So okay. that means a native 4x3 aspect ratio. That's interesting because the goggles are still 60x9. Yeah, back so, to the good old days of when people flew 4x3. <laughs> I mean, it's it's tricky because you know 4x3 is what we all flew when we were flying analog FPV systems. It was just a lot more common that standard definition cameras had that 4x3 aspect ratio. Mm -hmm. As we're going digital, 16x9 is becoming more prevalent. Yeah. I, I think a lot of people think that there's an advantage to 4x3 because that image is taller. So all things being equal, same lens, same everything, you're going to have a taller field of view okay. with a 4x3 camera, sacrificing some of the width. Okay. Right? But with a 16x9 camera, you're going to have wider on width, but a little bit shorter on height. Right. And so okay. it's kind of saying, well, you know, what do you want, right? And if you're doing flips and rolls, you know, maybe you want things to be a little bit more equal. And I, I could see how having a taller field of view would help some of those power loop gaps, some of those yeah. matty flips, things like that. You know, I might argue that what you should do is just take a 16x9 camera and use a wider lens yeah. so that you'd have the same up and down field of view, but gain some of the left and right for free. Yeah. But out of the box, without making any modifications, the 4x3 sensor of the standard V2 camera mm -hmm. is going to give you more up and down field of view than the original Avatar camera and than the Pro camera, because this one's still 16x9. Okay. Yeah, so this is a 16x9 camera, but it boasts a Sony sensor. That's nice. So it should be higher image quality. And it's supposed to have very good low light capability. Interesting. Yeah. So this is gonna, it's supposed to be a camera that's going to let you fly in the dark. So when you get either of these packages, of course, you get your video transmitter attached to your camera, your antenna. And the accessories that it comes with include a connector. So this, this would plug right into the video transmitter, and then you could solder that to your flight controller. Mm -hmm. 
or cut the connector off and direct solder it like we mentioned. You get this cable here so that you can use data transfer and uh, dump footage off of it because it does onboard DVR. Right, so the video transmitter has built-in storage. There's unfortunately not an SD card slot or anything like that. So when you want to get footage off, you have to use this cable, mm -hmm. which would plug into your video transmitter. Mm -hmm. But the other end, unlike the original Avatar video transmitter that had a USB, mm -hmm. this is another connector, and you're supposed to use this separate USB board. So that plugs into there. Now you have a standard USB-C connector. In some ways, this is an improvement, USB-C is the improvement, but it's a lot of pieces that could get right, lost. Right, so you have to go from like the video transmitter to a cable, mm -hmm. to a board, to another USB-C cable, yeah. versus before you could just plug in one cable to the video cable, transmitter. You and, know, and, yeah. I guess the thing is that you could leave this board plugged in and you could mount this somewhere on the drone. Yeah, it looks like there's some mounting holes. There's They're not standard holes. hole size, but... Yeah, I mean, the hole size is, looks to like be like a standard M2. Yeah. But the spacing isn't anything that you're going to find inherently on a drone. So it's not like there's going to be some built-in mounting point on the frame you already have. So maybe frame makers will start putting mounting points for this, but I, I don't think that's that likely. It's an interesting choice. I think there's some pros, there's some cons, but it's not a huge deal either way. We haven't talked about the DVR capabilities of this, though. We have not. Right. What are the capabilities? <laughs> I don't know. There you know, is it 1080 to 60? What is Both it? these units, both the V2 and the Pro, record in 1080p, 60 frames a second. The image quality is supposed to be improved over what we had before, especially with the pro camera. And more interestingly is that these have a gyro built in, which is meant to give you support for gyro flow. What is gyro flow? Gyro flow is a post stabilization software. So you can take any footage. If you have uh, camera footage and gyro data, you can put them together and gyro flow will basically give you a stabilized clip. If you've seen real steady clips like cinema shots, it'll give you that style of look. When you're trying to make things look as smooth as possible, it's really helpful to use post processing stabilization to give that like crazy buttery look, take out any little jitter, yeah. and just kind of keep your subject the focus of the shot rather than seeing all the little nuances corrections. of the flying. Right, yeah. right. So it's interesting that they put that in there. Um, I appreciate it. Yeah. Like, I, mean, I don't think it took much size. The fact that it caps out at 1080p in a world of 4K, how useful is that going to be, you think? I think it'll be like a solid backup for, you know, you, you're out freestyling, your GoPro stops recording. Right. I think it'll be a good backup to like, I can still show this clip on my Instagram or my YouTube channel. For Instagram, definitely, right? Yeah. I mean, on YouTube, I think, you know, having a 4K recording is probably going to be preferable. Yeah. But if you're making an Instagram clip, I mean, 1080p is definitely more than enough. Everyone's watching on their phone. Yeah, and so. I'm sure there's enough detail where, like, you can work it in the post-processing world and, you know, get it to look pretty good. So we're going to test out this new gear. We're going to try doing some cinematic shots where uh, we're going to have you chase me, yeah. uh, open broad daylight. We're going to see how the gyro flow is able to make things look a little bit more cinematic. Yeah. Then we're going to go do some freestyle at a spot where we'll have you know, some brights and some dark shadows, see how the dynamic range is. Yeah. And then we've got to test out the low light. They're really talking about the low light capability. Is, is that even worth I, I don't know how good that's going to be. Let's see. For testing out these Avatar video transmitters, we have built two CL2 Airs. This is our five inch frame with dead cat arms. So that moves the front props back a bit. Okay. Okay, and that's gonna help get the props out of view. Because it does look like Walksnail is wanting to give you more of the option to use your FPV camera as the recording camera. Yeah. So you probably aren't gonna wanna see props in view. So dead cat's gonna help with that. And on the pro camera, which has 16 by nine, which has an even wider field of view, we're using this special forward mount which pushes the camera forward and prevents you from you know, seeing the standoffs in view. You might get a little bit of that with the 4x3 camera, but not as much as you, you got with the 16x9. We are here at a lake to get some juicy cinematic footage so we can test the V2 camera and the Pro camera of the new Voxnell video transmitter system. So he's going to be on his E foil, is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah, so basically it's an electric flying surfboard. We're going to see if this can give you like good cinematic video right onto the video transmitter. I'm honestly a little bit hesitant just knowing that it's only in the cap out at 1080p. Mm -hmm. Save some weight not having to carry a GoPro and save some money. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. In the event that I lose my drone, the water bottle is always a good backup. So we're just gonna electrical tape it onto the drone and it should, should be good. And he has a rotor strap on his goggles. I'm gonna do that. We are up. That's so funny, I can hear the drone through his microphone.
Merci. So right now we're flying the pro camera. So this is the top of the line, fanciest, fanciest goodness camera you can get from Walk Sale. We're gonna fly the V2 camera. This is like the mid-tier camera that you can get with this VTX option. So we have the Pro camera and the V2. We'll find the V2 right now. Oh, so this camera is the four by three sensor. That is the big, biggest immediate difference that I noticed. This camera looks better. Does it on the standard one? Yeah. Nope. This camera looks significantly better. I don't know, maybe there are different settings on it, but this looks really good. Like, the colors really pop. This thing has some crazy lens flares. It's weird. I like this camera more than I do the Pro. As of, this is the first time I've flown any of it, so just like immediate, but the consensus. So far I'm liking the normal camera better, which is weird. I really thought I would like the other one camera, other camera better just cause like it's a, you know, higher end camera, but this one just looks better. It has some cool lens flares, which might not be desirable for like freestyle, but the cinematic footage we're trying to get today, I think it'll look pretty good. If you want a durable option that also has no props or nothing in view, I guess this would be a pretty good frame for it. Cause I mean, like the only way for you to break the lens is if like a stick goes in there and just whoosh, directly hits the lens. But I mean, I'm, I'm surprised. So we took these drones out, you chased me out on the lake. Yeah. What did you think of the footage that you got? You know, would you would you use that? Would you post it? I think it would be good for like Instagram clips. I, I still don't think it's like at the quality of a GoPro, but then again, like nothing is at the quality yeah, of a I GoPro. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's when you have a dedicated recording camera, you know, that's five, six hundred dollars. Yeah. Shooting in 4K, of course it's going to be better. Yeah. I, I'll say the footage that you were getting off of this exceeded my expectations. It I was thinking, hey, did. 1080p, I don't know how good it's going to be, yeah. but it looks pretty good. Yeah, from what I saw, there's definitely enough like detail for me to work with in the editing software and try to make it look better. Right, so the, the V2 kit that we got was not the version that supported GyroFlow. Okay. There is a GyroFlow version, so if you want to use the 4x3 camera with GyroFlow, that's possible, but the footage that you're seeing was you know, kind of more raw, straight out of the camera. Yeah. The Pro camera, we were able to run through GyroFlow, yeah. and it's pretty cool to have that option to take the recording from your FPV camera, yeah. run it through GyroFlow, and get something that looks pretty good. I yeah. mean... It's definitely a usable image. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think it looks going to look great for Instagram. You're probably going to want to carry a GoPro and get the full 4K recording for most purposes, mm -hmm. but... I mean, that's a really solid backup. Yeah. I mean, it's not just a nice looking 1080p image, it's one that you can also run through gyro flow, yeah. make it look stable. I mean, it's, 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 I was it's really cool to have the option, and it doesn't cost that much more to get the version that supports gyro flow or the version that has the pro camera. Uh, so I'm gonna try out the new standard camera, which is four by three, which is, I mean, what we used to fly, you know, on analog and even the DJI system was 4x3. But since switching to Avatar, I've been flying 16x9 and I really like it because it's a 16-9 sensor and a 16-9 display. My opinion is the best aspect ratio is whatever matches. If it's a 16-9 display, use a 16-9 sensor. And if you want a wider, taller field of view, you can just do that with different lenses. The lens you put on the camera will change how wide what you're seeing is. I feel like there's kind of this misconception that 4x3 inherently gives you a taller field of view, and that's not necessarily true, because you could just put a wider lens on a 16-9 camera, get the same top and down field of view, and then you just have wider stuff for free. Since the goggles are 16-9, I'm not exactly clear why Walksnail wanted to put a 4x3 sensor. I don't know, I'm gonna try it out. Yeah, looking through, it immediately like is a little bit jarring just because I'm used to having the wider view. But 
At least what's nice is that the displays and the goggles are OLED. So that means that any black areas are just not lit. So it's not like an LCD screen where there's a consistent backlight and so blacked out areas kind of have that washed out look. Like this, at first glance, I might think was a 4x3 display. So it's not too annoying. I'll probably get used to it pretty quickly. Feels great to me. Oh, I'm flying Bubby rates. <laughs> ah, shoot, Bubby. I'm not gonna lie, that feels pretty good. Hold on, I'm going yeah, to. Bubby rates, man. Super slow. Hold yeah. on, I'm gonna go to my rates, though. In case you didn't know, yes, the Avatar system has full beta flight on screen display, so you can go into the menu system and change rates and everything. So now I've got my rates. Yeah, there we go. It's good to me. I don't. Do you feel like you miss anything by using four by three over? You know what? Oh. Oh, oh. Oh, I um, no, actually, until you said something right there, I had completely forgotten <laughs> that it was 4x3. Nice. Yeah, I was totally being whiny about it, but actually flying it, you get used to it really quick. Yeah. Like, I'm just definitely not thinking about it. Um, hmm. Yeah, I mean... It. Yeah. Well, here, you know, let me go back to back. Let's go to the other one. Like, I wonder if this will kind of have more up and down. Like, it depends what lens they put on it. You could take the 16 by 9 camera, put a wider lens, and still have the same up and down field of view. That's not to say that that's what you get out of the box. So maybe I'll have less an up and down out of the box. I guess let's find out. Now going into the goggles. Yeah. Widescreen, baby. I can't tell. I wonder, am I getting less up and down or not? I might be, we'll have to do like some side by side, you know, looking at the same thing. but I almost feel like the 4x3 was giving me better up and down. Really? Yeah, I mean, again, that's just based on the lens that's coming out of the box. So I yeah. feel like the ultimate would be take this 16.9 and put a wider lens on it to match the 4x3. So then the, the left and right get wider for free. Yeah. But out of the box, mm, yes, out of the box, since they have the same lens, I guess you are getting more up and down, which, you know, makes sense. I mean, I don't feel held back at all or anything. Yeah, this is what we've been flying before. Yeah. So, like... Right there, I can see two of those ridges. Two of those ridges. Let me plug in mine. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I can see less. You can see less. You do get more up and down out of the 4x3. Is this back to normal? But you do get wider out of the 16x9. <laughs> My opinion is still that what you should do is match your image sensor to your display and then change the lens to tune the field of view. But most people are just going to use these out of the box. Yeah. And so out of the box, there is an advantage to the 4x3 camera mm -hmm. because while you do lose a little bit left and right, 
I think you still have plenty, and you do gain up and down, so then you kind of have an advantage for power loop, matty flip sort of things, because it, it is nice to have more up and down. I guess it just depends on the pilot. I mean, in, you know, in the beginning, I was like, oh, we need 4x3, because it's just what I was used to, but like, right. I like the extra wide. My flying's more like side to side and up, mm -hmm. as opposed to just like going, I don't know, it's hard to explain. I, I do more roll stuff. So like I kind of like I mean I got to fly back to back but I kind of like having a little bit wider you should in fly my brain. back to back because until we kind of measured it it felt to me like you had the same up and down with the sixteen by nine and then when I flew it I was like mm, the four by three does seem to give me more up and down control mm -hmm. and then once measuring it I'm like I do see after flying them for freestyle I definitely kind of like the four by three camera a little bit better I'm surprised but I I think I'm gonna agree with you so I mean yeah. going into this I, I just think hey match your image sensor to your screen size, mm -hmm. right? But when you fly the 4x3, as they come out of the box, that taller field of view, it's kind of nice. Yeah, I definitely did notice it helped, but that said, like, the 16x9 was not stopping me from doing anything. That's right, what that's I've what been we've flying. been flying. Yeah, so. So it's totally fine. It's totally fine. I kind of think that the ultimate would be to take the 16x9 camera mm -hmm. and swap out the lens for something that's even wider, mm -hmm. which I would hope would give you the same up and down field of view as the 4x3 camera and give you more left and right essentially for free. Yeah. But out of the box. Out of the box for freestyle? 4x3 four four three wins it for me. Yeah. yeah. It's not a deal breaker though. We've been flying 16x9. Yes. It's totally rippable. It's yeah. still a lot of fun. And 16x9 is kind of a more immersive experience because you have a bigger image in the goggles. Yeah, I will say, like, I did, like, just without actually flying them, looking at both, I prefer the 16x9 just because it, you know, it feels more like, oh, you know, it's right in my face. Right, but, when uh, you put the goggle on, you're like, oh, I'm in there now. Yeah. But then when you actually fly and you start trying to do some more of the advanced tricks, yeah. Uh, that 4x3 is nice. Yeah, it is. It's just great that there's options now. Yeah. So that's cool. So we're going to test out the low light capabilities of the camera. Yeah. This spot is going to be great because there are some lit areas yeah. that I think we could fly normally. And then there are some dark areas that the cameras we've been flying, you wouldn't be able to see anything. Yeah. So I'm interested to see if this low light camera, you know, will be able to fly in that dark area. And if you'd like, hopefully the transitions will be nice. Like if you could still fly under the lights, and then go into that yeah. dark area, that'd, be, that'd nice. be nice. So I mean like that area back there, like if this this light was off, I mean look, you can't it, you yeah, can't see like anything back there. It's pitch there. black over there. If this camera actually has low light performance, that'd be pretty cool because it would just open spots back up for yeah. you know, a whole new time that you could fly. Yeah, yeah. I, wanna, I wanna test it. So let's fly the standard camera first. Okay. Just the Avatar V2 camera. Yeah, it'd be nice to get like a baseline. So this one is not marketed to have any special low light capabilities, so okay. I think we should basically expect it to be like what we've been flying on the original Avatar camera and the DJI cameras. Okay. You know, which looks great during the day, yeah. but I'm not I'm not presuming we'll see much right now. Yes. Black. You're just actually, going straight into the abyss, okay. I, honestly, I can see pretty well. No, this isn't too bad, actually. Sure, this is a... a this camera. is the normal camera. Okay, I could not see those benches at all. Okay. I mean, I can see... That's all that matters. Really. But it's not, I mean, it's not great. I mean, under the lights is fine. I mean, of Obviously, in here, I can see perfectly. Yeah. Um, oh, man, but when you go from light to dark, it, it's kind of, you just have to expect it. The transition is what you're talking about? Yeah, I mean, I can fly, but I just don't feel woo, woo, super confident, gotcha. you know? Let's see, I'm gonna go out over this way. Yeah, going into this parking lot. Yeah, I can see pretty well. There is one street lamp there that seems to be lighting up a decent amount of area, so. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know what? Here, I'll go over to the other side that there's, I think there's no lights over there. Okay. So over this way, there are no lights and, oh yeah, oh man, yeah, I definitely oh, just almost there. hit a tree. Okay. Um, this is, Super grainy. grainy. No, like, I mean it's so grainy, like ISO, you know, to the max. Um, is there detail or is it just grain? That's a lot of grain. I mean, it's rough. It's flyable, but you know, it's it's pretty rough. Oh man, especially like if there is an area with light, like over here, then the area without light is just the abyss. Yeah, I'm flying into the abyss right now. I do not feel confident 
at all. I mean, obviously I'm navigating. Yeah. But I'm not doing any like any tricks or anything. So you're fucked. I didn't see it. Oh, there he is. All right, here. Let me take a take a swag at this boy. All right. Oh dang. Uh, it's just really bad. I mean, yeah, this looks about the same. Like that's what you're used to on. Yeah. And how far, oh my gosh, dude, how far did you fly? I cannot see anything. I went like way back there, to the left of the building, like over oh. the Oh. Yeah. Oh, I, I, dude, I, don't try, I can't even see over there. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much an abyss, but if you go slow. Okay, let me try. I just don't want to hit a tree, I don't know the area. There is a tree. And you won't see the tree. I'm going back. <laughs> so let's see. So I'm going to go over to this other spot. Over here. Oh my gosh, I can't see anything. I should slow down. Okay. Yeah, like it's kind of dry. But once you get to the street lights, I mean, okay. it's, it's navigable. Now, now I'm at the street lights. It's fine. And I can see like the little lights coming from it. Ooh, do the, go over to the awning. The awning? And do the, the little, it's a real tight gap. There's real, real tight gap. Dive behind it? Yeah, do you see it? Like between yeah. the building? It's I don't know if I want to do that right now. Oh, I don't like this. I don't, I'm, dude, I don't think I can do it. What? Oh, I did it. I, did you? There you go. So now we're gonna. I'm gonna try the other one. <laughs> okay. I'm really excited to try to go over, over there and see what. I, the I mean, like. I don't know like how much of a difference this camera is gonna make. We'll see. I mean, it was like navigable. Like I could see, but I had to be really close. I had to fly really slow. Oh my gosh. What? Are you? <gasps> Dude. Are oh, you kidding me? I can't just tell if this is. A Are thing. you kidding me? What? I'm, I'm going straight for back here. <gasps> Bubby, this is the coolest. Oh my gosh. It's so. It's just so different. Like the, the place where you could barely so, see. I could see everything. Like I can see I can see the sky. I can see the clouds. What? Dude, you can see the clouds? This is incredible. This is oh my gosh. And when you actually do have light, like out here, <gasps> this is so next level. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. I just don't all say this is an amazing. It's just, you can see. So much more confident with this. Like, like now I feel like I could like dive into these things. Right. That is, that is so fun. <laughs> I need to try this. I need, I need to see this juice. I am so mad that we didn't have this when we were flying at Rampage at night. Like that the episode that we just did, I don't know relative to you guys, but the episode that we just came out with, we filmed with the old cameras that didn't have any special low light capabilities and we put flashlights on the drones we had a lot of fun with it but this changes the game with this I, i'm telling you i don't even know if you need the flashlight man you don't think you need dude, the flashlight it's, wait, you it, don't think you need the flashlight dude, bro dude it's stupid so flash I, flashlight drones are relevant it's, so what do they do they put like a bigger sensor i don't or? know what they did i don't <laughs> i don't know i don't i don't understand i don't understand i don't understand. okay I see why you're freaking out. It's cool. <laughs> I see why you're freaking out. Oh, this is stupid. Oh, this is crazy. And you can fly in that whole area. Now. I can. Like, I can. I'm navigating the entire area just fine. It was just a black hole over it there. It was before. just a black hole that you could sort of make out some bars, and now it's like completely usable. And there are no lights over there. Yeah, that's insane. I mean, the thing for me is that like you can see the clouds in the sky. Do you remember the other one? It dude, oh, I'm in the pitch black. What the, dude, dude, dude. <laughs> I, oh man, I hate that I'm over. I'm, this is so sick. What the heck? I'm like flying above this freaking black tree and I can make out the leaves. What the heck? Oh, this is stupid. This is stupid. I can see everything. I can, it's so amazing. Whoa. I can see everything. And I, I can, I can. It's awesome. I can it's see. So I don't understand <laughs> how this even works. Damn, don't, Sony, you make a good sensor. Oh, this is Sony sensor. That's this why. is the Sony sensor, man. Okay, so over here, it's also pitch black. Let's see. Dude, what the heck? What the heck? Shoot. 
for daytime, oddly enough, I like the image of the V2 better. Yeah. But simply because this camera can do this, uh -huh. I'm going to fly this camera. But this with the 16 by nine, you have less up and down. So I think I want this camera yeah. with the wider lens. Yeah, I mean, this is what we've been flying the entire time. So like nothing new, right? Right. But ex having experienced the taller from the four by three, I'm like, I'm gonna put the wider lens on here. That's gonna give me the taller field of view and the light and the low light performance and the full screen. Oh, I'm so excited about this now. This is, Pro is the way to go, I think. I don't know, but then the out of the box. I mean, we'll if you're not gonna change the lens out of the box, the field of view is better. RX left. Oh, come on, get back there. Dude, I, your, your level of uh, freak out was uh, ju good. justifiable. Like, look at this. You see that? Yeah. I just split us the tree that was black on top. This is stupid. It is dumb. But I love it. I want to check my camera angle. What the heck? I know, right? What you the take heck? it off, you're like, I'm like, it's oh, so dumb. Good job, uh, Wax Snell on this camera. Caddix, whoever it is. Wax Caddix. Well, I don't care who made it, it's good. <laughs> I want to fly with good. There we go. That's what lightweight's killing me. Anyways. You know, this is great. Yeah, no, this is insane. I, I just want to fly over here, like, knowing that, like, haha, I couldn't fly over here earlier. Oh. But now I can't. Dude! I could like fly up in the tree. Oh my gosh. Do it. Oh yeah. I'm in the tree. Like, up in the branches. I am in the branches right now. That's so cool. That's so stupid. I don't want to crash. But, uh... That's so stupid. I'm in the branches. Okay, I'm not going to crash. But that's insane. I don't want to stop flying. I'm going to go forever. Diving in the holes. What? Are you diving the, the squares? Yeah. Just been doing it. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Nice, Bubby. Just gotta get used to the quad. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Just gotta get used to the quad, boy. Now we're shreddy teddies. Oh my gosh, I just want a freestyle. Easy boy. Oh, no, no, two in a row, I'm good at that. Okay, that was sick. Oh, this, this uh. That is sick. Yeah, cool. That is sick. I'm putting it in every single quad right now. So and I'm going uh, to every night spot and I'm flying like crazy. Oh, uh, but like what? Which one do you use? Because out of the box, the field of view on the standard camera is better. Mm -hmm. But this, the flexibility is nice. I guess. I mean, we've been flying with this field of view. The field of view, like, is nothing different. Right. So I don't know. I, like think, it. I don't know. And I think maybe put the put the wider lens on it. I don't want to try that. I mean, so you seem to like really want that extra field of view. I mean, top of having experienced it, I, I just, I liked it. I yeah. don't know. I don't know. Doesn't kill me too much, but uh, it's, it's definitely nice for sure. Oh, this is so sick. I yeah. can see everything. I love it. <laughs> I love it. You know, it's sick. I'm impressed. Uh, honestly, like when, when I put the goggles on my face with the low light camera, it was is pretty pretty impressive. I don't think I've ever flown like a night camera like that. Yeah. So like just you know, bare bare naked eyes seeing it's just basically I can't see anything. Put so the goggles it's on. It's it's literally it's a superpower. Power. Yeah. Yeah. It just it was a. Uh, it's really gonna open up. I think a lot of stuff for me at least because I want to rip spots at night. <laughs> That's I, I mean, we flew both drones back to back, yeah. and with the standard camera, we experienced 
the low light performance that we've been flying with on the original Avatar video transmitter and on other digital systems and I mean, you can sort of see. I, I, it's 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 pretty dark though. Yeah. And then when we went to the pro camera, what I I couldn't believe it was the same time of day. Yeah. It looked totally different. Yeah. It was really exciting. I think it opens up new times and new areas that you can fly. That being said, I don't know that you're necessarily going to get like an ultra cinematic, yeah. beautiful freestyle video out of that. But yeah. it's not always about that. Sometimes it's just about having fun. And with the pro camera, you could have more fun at more times, so that's yeah. kind of a win. All right, Bubby, if you had to choose one, would you choose the standard V2 kit or the Pro kit? I think for me, if I were to have to choose one to put on my quad, it would be the Pro camera just because of the low light. Like, I know we talked about 4.3, but I think the low light for me, like, just gives it a little edge even over seeing more field of view. I, out of the box, mm -hmm. I'm going to choose the 4x3. Okay. I'm going to choose the 4x3. I didn't think I was going to like it that much. Going into it, I was like, I don't like this decision by Walk Snail. I think they should just stick with using 16 by 9 sensors to match the 16 by 9 display. Yeah. It is what it is. We got what we got, and out of the box, I, I do prefer the field of view. Mm -hmm. But, oh, it's but. I'm going to try putting a wider lens on the 16 by 9 camera. Mm -hmm. And if that can give me the up and down view that I want with getting some left and right for free. That's great. And then I also get that crazy low light performance. So I, I think Best this of both worlds. definitely has potential. So if I was just choosing for a freestyle build out of the box, I'm going to go with the 4x3. But I'm really intrigued by the pro camera. I'm going to keep playing with it, trying out different lenses. And e either way, you can't go wrong. And yeah. it's just cool to see that the Avatar ecosystem is continuing to be innovated. And we got new products coming out, new features. The yeah. new firmwares keep pushing it forward. We finally got share mode. Oh, I'm really excited about share mode. What do you guys think is better? We got two new video transmitters, slightly different feature sets. Either way, pretty great FPV system. But which one, which one do you think is the winner? Is it the standard V2 kit or the new Pro camera? I don't know. It's I could see both arguments, right? Yeah. Comment down below because we want to know. Whichever you decide, we have a build at rotoriot.com. You can yeah. buy the video transmitter, build your own drone, or if you don't want to build, we're building drones for you. You can get our pre built drones with either setup and you're going to have a good time. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Rotoriot. If you liked, make sure you subscribe and right next to it, there's a bell because we post every Monday. Hit the bell. We'll send you a little notification, let you know hey, it's we'll Monday. We posted a video. Come hang out. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Guys, I'm Ladrib. I'm Bobby FPV. We'll see you next time on Rotoriot. Every pack, if you type, you should change the props. Just do it. Bend and send crew. What's up? Bend and send. And Jello crew. I'm telling you, I get lots of comments on my Jello. <laughs> They're always talking about it, you know? <laughs> they love it. They can't get enough of it. How, did you keep commenting about it, or? I mean, the comments are always like, oh, so much Jello, right? Yeah, Drew. Yeah, like, they're like, yeah, yeah, oh, there's so much jello in your video, uh-uh. Uh. uh.